Alrighty guys and gals, uh, thanks for joining my channel again. I am Kyle with Learning with Kyle. Um, I have decided I'm going to do a little bit of a change up with my channel. I was doing or trying to do some tech gear stuff and uh, then quickly realized that I don't know enough about it to do that. So we're going to go into something that I do know how to do, which is turning wrenches. Uh, I've been doing it since I was God, probably about 14, 15 years old. And I uh, realized that I could be more helpful because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to be helpful out here. So I can be more helpful on doing that than anything else. So uh, got my first little project last night. My mom called me and said her lawnmower wasn't working right. So I'm going to go out there and get that thing working right for her real quick. And uh, I'm going to take you guys along with it and uh, hopefully be able to show you a thing or two and we'll go from there uh and before we get started if you haven't already go ahead and drop down hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification that way you know when i do my job and put up something new on youtube all right let's get going all right and just like that with the magic of editing we're here so this is the lawnmower uh it's a craftsman yts 3000 uh she's telling me that it's bogging down uh, especially going up hills, not really wanting to run right, hard to start. So we're going to get into it and figure out what's going on with it. Alrighty, so first thing on these lawnmowers, you got to start taking a lot of covers off. Uh, really just to get to everything that you need to. <clears throat> with these, you just a couple of little thumb screws. out to our first part there filter right here uh, quick pull off there's a gasket all the way around it and this is where I typically start this one doesn't look horrible could be better have seen a lot worse and still running air filter right there is um, always a good place to start uh, don't really see anything wrong with that so we're gonna dive a little bit deeper down into this and see if we can't figure this thing out So our next bat is to take this whole cover off right here, which will expose the carburetor. Uh, there's two bolts that I see in it, uh, and then it should just pop right out. So this just gently slides out and uh, kind of puts off to the side there. Don't worry so much about that line. That's just a uh, air filter line. So uh, now that we got those two out, the carburetor will just slide right out after we get these little linkages off of here and we're going to pop those out all right so now that we got the carburetor off here uh we're going to finish taking these little linkages off of it so we can take it out and really inspect it but a lot of times what i'll find is this little guy right here just needs to be cleaned off and cleaned out a uh, new gasket put on it and everything's fine and dandy so uh, in the process of doing all this we're also going to take the fuel filter out make sure that there's no restrictions in that and that everything's flowing properly because uh, I was told that this was seven years old and really no maintenance has been done on it so that's it sounds like what this needs is just a general tune-up new spark plug fuel filter fuel Carburetor cleaned out, air filter, and it should be good to go. All right, so once you get your fuel filter off, uh, best way to check these things is uh, you'll notice there, there's an arrow on here pointing in one direction. That's the way that the fuel is going to be flowing. Uh, so you can either put an air hose on this end or you can blow on it if you're brave enough. <clears throat> and... Uh, just to make sure that you can blow through this without having to really strain too hard because you want it to be able to free uh, You want the fuel to free flow through this uh, This one here it free flows fairly easy, but uh, I doubt you're gonna be able to see it But the inlet tube 
and the outlet tube are a little bent, uh, and, and really they're uh, kind of crimped more than anything. Uh, so that's going to restrict your fuel flow, and that will cause your engine to bog down. So we're going to go ahead and replace that with a brand new filter. Right here, and again, you still want to make sure that you can just barely see this one, but you want to make sure that the uh, arrow's still pointing in the same direction. And it's always good to change your fuel filters out whenever you do start noticing uh, your engine bogging down or something like that. And uh, th th that way you just, you're always having a very free flowing fuel coming at, uh, down into your carburetor. Uh, <clears throat> So it's fairly simple to replace. Just slide it on. I uh, don't know if you can really see that or not. But, and try to keep the gas from flowing out of it too much. But uh, So you're going to slide that end on and then Turn around in the other end, go ahead and slide it on as well, trying to not spill gas all too much. Uh, go ahead and slide your clamps back into place. And again, this is all while holding the end of the tube so you don't spew gas all over uh, whatever surface you're working on. And if you're having issues like I am about getting the... Uh, clamps on with just one hand you can always take something easy to get hold of like an allen wrench and uh providing it'll fit down in the tube fairly easy and kind of block everything off all right so now i ain't gonna hold it i can use two hands to get these clamps back on and you want to make sure that these clamps go back into the same position that they were in that way you don't run into issues about fuel lines popping off there it goes <clears throat> alrighty so now, whenever you go to put the uh, carburetor back on, be sure that it goes back on in the same direction. And you kind of want to uh, inspect it a little bit, make sure there's no gunk built up in there. And I uh, don't quite know if you're going to be able to see that or not, but uh, as long as there's no gunk and everything kind of free flows the way that it should... Uh, then you should be good. So uh, at this point, you can go ahead and get your little sensor back in the bottom of your filler cup. And it's not really imperative, but it's a good idea, as always, to... Uh, uh, the way I always do these, I don't want to tighten them down too far, but uh, just get a pair of needle nose pliers, and once you get it hand tight, turn it a quarter of a turn. You should be absent. <laughs> All right, so your best bet to get these on or off, I'm sorry, without spilling any fuel, is crimp down on your line there. Go ahead and pull this out. <clears throat> Keep keeping steady pressure on the line Now that everything's installed, I'm 
Line your bolts up. <clears throat> Get everything back down in there. Go ahead and start your nuts and get them finger tight. And like I said, tighten this one down a little bit. This side down. Then we're going to come back, tighten this one side a little bit more, and a little bit more, and then tight. Just like that. Alrighty. So, now we're going to go ahead and get a new air filter. Now, this is probably going to be a little bit of a, a retrofit air filter just due to the fact that. They didn't have quite the correct one, but it does fit there. And we'll turn this side around this side and squeeze it down in there a little bit. There, just like that. <clears throat> now we get these two put back on. just like that <clears throat> all right so now that we've got what we assume to be the problem fixed of the uh, bogging down we're going to start this thing up and see how it does problems are fixed all right so I know that video is a little sketchy and I'm sorry about that it's the first one I've done like that but uh, uh, as always I do want to thank you for watching the show and um, if you haven't already go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below you and hit that uh, don't forget to hit that bell notification too that way you know when I'm doing my job by putting stuff out for you thank you